Mike, a disease. And we've got Eric and Ryan in the studios with us uh, from Street Pharmacy. You're playing a gig on Sunday at yes. the St. Hollywood. Um, Tell us the details about that show. We are playing an afternoon show at the St. Hollywood. It is all ages. It's it actually really cool there. I I'd never been there, but we had just recently performed with Gordy Lewis. And uh, we did a teenage head song with with Gordy. And See, was, uh, you're, you're jumping ahead when oh, there's all these details that I want to know about. Why were you playing a song with Gordy Lewis? Um, he he did a, a Frankie Venom song book night, and uh, us being teenage head fans, we decided to go, and we ended up uh, we were able to perform uh, "Picture My Face" with him. And it was really cool. When you say we, who was we? Uh, my bass player Jesse Robitaille played bass, and uh, I played uh, I didn't play guitar, I just sang. And mm. I rolled around the floor like a maniac, and it was a great time. And just to be in the same room as Gordy and play on the same stage as him, and it was really cool. The music that we heard, uh, we'll get back to Gordy Lewis and the Gordy Lewis songbook and Teenage Head. Uh, we're talking with Street Pharmacy. If, if I were to say your vocals, that's a, it's a, a slickly produced CD we got here uh, from Street Pharmacy. What if uh, somebody made a comparison to like a Dave Grohl? Uh, or a Foo Fighters, uh, so far from the true songs that we've heard. How would you respond to that? Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. I thought you were going to pull a knife out of your pocket again. No, no, I really enjoy all of Foo Fighters records, and um, you know, this was a, a blatantly obvious attempt at making uh, a, a guitar-driven 90s alt kind of sounding album. Well, yes. Uh, I was going to say, it's it's not... It's a rock album with a... What would define something as alternative, and somebody who is an alternative, they don't get it. It's, it's your influences, where you came from and how you grew up. Like if you're a guy that beat up on people and uh, then you got the music, well, then you might be what they call the skid. Uh, but if you were the one that was being beaten up or you thought you were weird or you write poetry or read poetry, heaven forbid, or you don't mind David Bowie and think it's you know him and Lou Reed or you wonder about him and Mick Jagger or whatever, mm -hmm. then you're all probably alternative. Um, and uh, so it, it, it's that experience there, I think, that forms what is could be called alternative day. But if you were there from back in the day, in 2011, we're almost in 2012, that word alternative is just, it's kind of like the Beatles. It's a horrible name. It is. But it means something totally different than that because of what that band is. So alternative might mean something to somebody who was there that can appreciate Dave Grohl, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Tad, uh, Mud Honey, and more. But uh, to somebody who's 19 or even 18, 17 listening at home, alternative. They don't have a clue. No, it could be. We could be saying cream cheese instead of alternative. And so, that would make more sense to them. Yes. Well, yeah, well, it makes as much sense. Alternative, alter. There used to be signs when we were on the third floor of Hamilton Hall that uh, people would write graffiti saying, "Alternative to what?" Um, so alternative to the mainstream, but major labels and mainstream don't exist much anymore. This is true. It's it's also funny that the you know the term modern rock or alternative rock radio has become the you know the norm. The, the oh, yeah. rock is alternative rock. It's yeah. just very strange. Well, what is rock is alternative rock. I think we're in a very strange time in music in general. Um, I don't know where the guitars have gone. I miss them, though, and mm. that's why I made this record. And I think that's why Eric also took part in joining the band initially when I sent him these songs. Yeah, um, you know, Eric's a, Eric's a fantastic lead guitar player, and I sent him these songs, and he was like, yeah, let's bring the rock back. And that was, that was the idea behind this whole thing. It, there's a huge amount of children that are disenfranchised by the, the, the lack of being able to connect with popular music today, and we're hoping that those kids, those young boys, 13 and 14, that want to pick guitars and rock, will feel compelled to after listening to this album. What? Uh, well, you mentioned Eric is a good player, and you were you needed another guitarist for the band. And why why did you like Eric? Um, I liked Eric um, because Eric has the ability to turn a guitar solo um, into its own beast. He really puts a stamp on what he's able to do with a guitar, and that's mm. why that's why I I liked him. Does he have a style? Um, Eric's style is his own. Uh, I, I think that he steals from so many people that it just becomes his own, which is that every good musician's a thief. And I, mean, I, I just say that. I mean, there's a lot of good players, so to speak. We can, you know, there's the whole list of Eric Clapton's and the, uh, you know, Ingrid Malmsteen's and the Stevie mm -hmm. Ray Vaughan's and all those people. 
But I know a band like Kiss and Ace Frehley, who a lot of people for until maybe the 90s, maybe when they started reforming with the makeup, started giving their due to Ace. But a lot of times people didn't give Ace the due. But the whole problem with Kiss when he left was they couldn't find a decent guitarist to replace him. Mm. And finally, in the end, they were like, just play it like Ace did. You know, they're telling a hired gun like Bruce Kulak, because he had this insane style that was inexplicable, and he played wrong things at wrong times, but it just made it work. Mm -hmm. So that's why style is much more important to me when I hear a guitarist than a... You know, a shredding ability, or how fast or how loud you can play. Well, uh, I think the the relationship that Eric and I have as being both the lead guitar players who play most of all the leads in the band is that I'm very raw and 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 not very slick on the guitar. Um, when I play leads, they're very, um, I guess, ace freely. You can put it that way. Yeah. You know, I'm the ace freely, and he would be like the, um, and I don't know what the maybe the Terry Kath or something, you know, he's very slick, he, he knows how to play. I don't know how to play. I just I just hit it really hard and make cool noises, and he knows what he's doing, and I just, I don't have a clue. Supposedly people take his guitar, and, and he's on the TV and all this stuff, but he won't talk about it to us. So. <laughs> I think Ryan wanted me because he wanted a right-hand guitar player in the band, too. Yeah, that's another thing. Does it really. look cooler on stage? Are you on opposite sides of the stage? Well, we can do We're, the, on, the, we're the on the same side of the stage, so our, our guitar stocks cross. Oh, but then you're just going to be hitting each other. But no, Sabbath is the way, you know, the, yeah. uh, the singer in the middle and then like two wings. Yeah, because I'm the only lefty in the band now and everybody else is right-handed. I'm like the oddball out. Uh -huh. And there's, you know, there's call three yourself stars. an oddball. Uh -huh. It's self-deprecating. I know. You're just fishing for a compliment. You're That's smarty. Insane. You're smarty. Yeah, this is true. Sorry. Um, Did you... <laughs> I'm just fishing for you, compliments. I don't want to make you mad. That's from the, earlier in the conversation. I'm just having fun. Got to explain myself. Bird and Ethel in the uh, Blue Room. Bandy Boom, they're doing a show. We're talking right now with Street Pharmacy. This is CFMU. They're playing. I've got a Teenage Head is an influence on you. Why Teenage Head? Uh, That's old school punk. That's not alternative 90s punk rock. It but it's it's cool. Gordy Lewis is a great. I'm guitar. not disputing you. I just wanted to know why. Um, How? It's, well, a, it's very bizarre. But I started out listening to bands like you know, the Sex Pistols and and Teenage Head because of my my brother. He's 19 years older than I am. Oh. And uh, I was like three or four when he would bring these records home, and it was the early 90s and. He had these records from before, and then he'd bring you know, his alt records home. These Seattle's bands would come home with, you know, we'd be listening to Anarchy in the UK, and then, you know, Even Flow, back to back. So mm -hmm. I never distinguished between the two. I just thought, this is great, it's edgy, there's, some, there's, there's meaning behind it, and I liked it. And it had, it had a profound effect on my writing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where the Teenage Head influence came in, it's my, it's my brother. Did you get to see them live, Frankie Venom live? That scene. Oh, I've seen Music Fest. Yeah, a couple years ago. You went you were to there. Weren't you? Yeah. yeah. You I think went. I was there, yeah. He, was, he played, and we played. He was in the band. Different yet, bands played. playing amongst the same festival, that was yeah. Why, yeah. so strange. Yeah. That's so strange. And you were both in St. Catharines. How dare you? People from Ireland don't go to St. Catharines. Yeah, we're That's banned from there now. Are you? Yeah, we just did a solo show at the Red Hot Chili Pepper. We're no longer allowed back. Because you sold it out? And that's not allowed. Um, no, I think that there was so much drunken teenage mayhem, and the the the, uh, the bar may have lost their liquor license in the past. So we were we're, we're banned now. I don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. No, of course not. No. I don't. I don't condone anything. If you drink, don't drive. And well, if you're underage, get the hell away from me. I don't drink at all. Actually, really? For I don't, real? I don't drink. I don't smoke. Is that by choice? Um, ever since my brain swelled for the chicken mm -hmm. pasta, I, I, I somehow I knew it was going to come back to that. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it affects me in a different way. Uh, uh, so much that we could probably keep on talking. Why? It's in. You, you went to the St. Hollywood. You played with Gord Lewis, one of your uh, teen or even younger idols. Um, you think it's a cool place? So you're playing there in the afternoon, though. What up with that? Uh, we wanted to have an all ages show. And we wanted to make sure that people would be able to come to it and not have to worry about, you know, being under 19. So the, the solution was to throw it in the afternoon. We had a young high school band called the Scottalists coming out. Mm -hmm. they're, they're a ska band. They're uh, from, I think they're from Stony Creek. Um, and we wanted their fans to also come and have fun. 
We're all both supporting each other. So it's just the two bands? Just the two bands, yes. Start time? And start time is 1 p.m. 1 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Wow, so have lunch and then go to the club. Have lunch? Hey. Go to the, yeah, it's a matinee. Uh, and uh, so people will be able to buy the CDs, and uh, yeah. online they can buy the CDs if they're listening at home or on the web at cfmu.mcmaster.ca. They can learn more about the band streetpharmacymusic.com. And uh, we got one more song to play, and I've already blanked out because I was reading too many words. Uh, this song's called Make You Well. And yes. Uh, it's our first single from the record. Oh, interesting. We go back to front then. You, you prepared this, haven't you, Ryan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So let's uh, make you well. This song's about divorce. This is where the song, uh, the album comes from. Well, see, it all ties up. Um, so what TV show was Eric on then? The, what TV show? Yes. Uh, what were you on? Let's see. It was a show called The Next Star. That's it. Yeah, The Next Star. You didn't know that? I can't remember the name of things. I have a brain trauma. Give me a break. Brain trauma? Like, is that serious? Uh, My brain was so swollen it was touching the leather membrane of my head for five months. I have a little loss of pain out here. Uh, are you okay right now? No, I'm actually crying out of my left eye, but you can't see. No, don't kid around, because people at home are going, what's he doing to this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who they're talking about, me yeah, or you. Everything's what, safe. Why is Eric sitting there doing nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Eric's like climbing the walls in the background trying to escape. Oh, yeah. But I wrote I wrote this song, Make You Well, when I was 16 in my guitar class, and uh, it was one of these songs where I felt it was the first good song I ever wrote. So that's why I made the record. I've waited for years to record it. Make you well. You're going to play this uh, Sunday, 1 p.m., uh, the Scatolites from Stony Creek. And, well, now, uh, are you ever going to make home in Hamilton? We, we would love to. We would love to move <laughs> Well, in. Eric can help you find a place or something. You guys can move in with, with my parents. They won't mind. Really? <laughs> yeah. I accidentally swore on the phone today on speaker, and it really aggravated his mom. <laughs> I don't think she's going to let me back in the house. Yeah, on second thought. Was it, uh, I, we can't say any profanity on this, right? No, was it, was it a four letter word? Or was it, it was a four letter word. Okay, yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. the worst. They're worse than the three well, letters. Funny enough, yeah, the, well, yeah. that's why they named them four letters, you know. Oh, mm. I'd like to give a shout out to my girlfriend who's waiting outside in the car. Oh, shut up. She, well, we she, shouldn't have stayed so long if she's sitting in the car. I, she couldn't, f I don't know what happened. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Bethany. I'm really sorry. We lost track of time. Um, here's, well, I'm certain she, if she's your girlfriend, and she enjoyed hearing you talk well, this about this one's your favorite song, so that's well, why I stayed it for last. And you're going to send it out to her. This one goes out to you, Bethany. Thank you for driving us. Uh, and thank you to Eric, and thank you to Ryan Street Pharmacy again Sunday at the St. Hollywood at 1 o'clock for an all-ages gig. And uh, check them out at streetpharmacy.com from the new CV Divorce. This is Street Pharmacy with Make You Well. This is 93.3 CFMU.